we know, we know. This comparison doesn't look like it makes any sense. And we were skeptical too. But then we took a look at the most often searched YouTube Nexus 5 strings, and this comparison is up there. And that makes a certain degree of sense, if you think about it. Despite their obvious differences, these are two of the highest profile devices out there right now. The phone's getting most of the buzz, really. So of course people want to know how they compare. Let's find out. I'm Michael Fisher, this is Pocket Now, and this is Google Nexus 5 versus Samsung Galaxy Note 3. Right up front, probably the biggest difference between these devices is philosophical. The Nexus 5 was built to be a flagship phone at an affordable price point, while the Note 3 was built to be a premium phone offered at a premium price. More than that, the devices differ in just what they're trying to accomplish. The Nexus 5 exists to showcase the best of pure Android, or more precisely, perhaps, pure Google. The Note 3 sits at the exact opposite side of the spectrum, with so many modifications that at times it hardly looks like an Android device. The gulf between these phones becomes apparent the minute you set eyes on their hardware. Where the Nexus 5 takes the form of a rather minimalist, almost featureless slab, the Galaxy Note 3 is meant to catch the eye. There's a lot of imitation stuff here. Imitation metal, imitation stitched leather. And whether that comes off as high-end or tacky will depend on your taste. In terms of in-hand feel, the Note 3 is 38 grams more massive than the Nexus 5, and it's significantly larger, so much so that it's pretty tough to use one-handed. That's primarily because of the 5.7-inch AMOLED screen on the Note, nearly three-quarters of an inch larger on the diagonal, and featuring a Wacom digitizer to sense input from the device's included S Pen. The screen is the same resolution as on the Nexus. It doesn't offer as much pixel density due to its larger size, but it does bring deeper blacks and better viewing angles. Whether you like the added pop its AMOLED technology brings to colors will depend on you. Under the hood, the differences keep piling up, and that's evidence starting right at the back panel. The Notes is removable, granting access to the replaceable battery and expandable micro SD storage. The Nexus features neither of those, its battery and 16 or 32 gigs of storage sealed up in its casing. And while each phone is powered by a Snapdragon 800 SoC, the Note 3 takes things a step further by bumping up the RAM by 50%, and tossing in an IR transmitter for controlling your home entertainment system, as well as a higher resolution camera. Despite the Nexus 5's inclusion of Qi wireless charging, a touch we rather like and a favorite feature from the Nexus 4, it's pretty clear that the spec beast in this contest is the Samsung phone. But at least part of the reason for that is because the Note needs pretty intense hardware to run Samsung's software. The TouchWiz third-party UI is one of the heaviest around, and it enables the special features we covered extensively in our Note 3 review. Everything from the S Pen note-taking, multitasking, and scrolling, to the multi-window mode that lets you run two apps side-by-side -side at the same time. In exchange for this added functionality, though, you're forced to deal with Samsung's idea of what smartphone software should be, an environment which really isn't as mature or as reliable as what Google is doing on the Nexus, which is namely providing the smoothest, tightest, cleanest Android experience to date. With no third-party UI to tangle with, the Nexus 5 may not bring as many features, but what it does, it does very well. It's Android in its most optimized form, giving you a direct line to a very, very powerful backend of services and features and almost all of it is simple and light enough to use with one hand. It's the perfect combination of simplicity, aesthetic beauty, and utility. So while we can get more done with the Note 3, we like the software experience as a whole better on the Nexus 5. Fortunately, Android is customizable enough to allow custom launchers to replicate the best of both worlds for those who like to get adventurous. Elsewhere, the Note 3 and the Nexus are more similar than you might expect. The camera's a good example. We found the Nexus 5's optically stabilized shooter pretty inconsistent during our testing, but 
it keeps up nicely with the Note 3 in terms of still shots, delivering a wider field of view than the Samsung device, and also producing more true-to-life colors under certain conditions. The Nexus 5's camera is a lower resolution unit, but its stabilization helps it deliver better shots, particularly in low light. And it also does a better job at attenuating the shakes and jitters that come from shooting video while walking. Otherwise, these cameras are comparable on video, each delivering a nice picture with excellent audio. And I shall have him. I'll chase him round the moons of Nebia and round Antares Maelstrom and round Perdition's flames before I give him up. There's a wider gulf in terms of battery life. With a user-replaceable power pack, the Note 3 is already more flexible than the Nexus, but that removable battery is also significantly larger. That means the Note 3 is much more likely to last a couple days away from the charger, and while our testing showed the Nexus 5 is really no slouch in that department, the Note 3 is still our pick for you road warriors out there. Call quality is roughly equivalent in normal voice conversations, but switch those calls to speakerphone mode, and the bottom firing speaker of the Note 3 handily outshouts the weak unit on the Nexus. That holds true for media playback as well. In short, if the Nexus 5 is the small but quick sports car that's easy to just fire up and drive, the Note 3 is the finicky SUV that takes more time and attention, but allows much more flexibility and power on your trip. And, you know, that would be that, if we didn't take cost into consideration. As we made very clear in our Nexus 5 review, a huge part of that device's appeal is its price. At between $349 and $399 off contract in select markets through the Google Play Store, the Nexus 5 is between three to $400 cheaper than the average cost of an off-contract Note 3. That's a big deal from any perspective, and it makes the Nexus something to seriously consider if you're on a budget or if you're looking for the best possible Android experience in a conventional sense. If instead, you're looking for the added utility that only the combination of a huge screen, a stylus, and class-leading hardware versatility can provide, or you're in the market for a phone that can also serve as a tablet replacement, well, seek out the Note 3. No other phone fits the bill like it does. Just be sure to save your pennies beforehand, and don't begrudge your Nexus 5 carrying friends their excellent value. Folks, if you want to stay abreast of all the latest Nexus 5 developments here at Pocket Now, including our forthcoming comparison with the Galaxy S4, follow us on social media, where we will be posting those just as soon as they're ready. The Nexus 5 review is already up, and the Note 3 review, of course, has been up for a while now. Check it out at pocketnow.com or here on YouTube at our channel page, and toss us a like before you go anywhere if you did enjoy this video. Leave a comment down below with your feedback. Most importantly, stay tuned for future videos. Until next time, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon.